Welcome and thanks for joining us. I'm here with attorney Martin Crump with the law firm Davis and Crump. And today we're talking about something called IVC filters. So Martin, what is an IVC filter? Bill, an IVC filter is a wire trap, a spider-like trap that's placed in the inferior vena cava, which is actually the largest vein in the body. Uh, the trap serves the, the purpose of actually upon implantation of spreading out and then catching pulmonary embolisms to prevent those clots from making it to the heart or the lungs. Sounds like it could be a useful product, so what's the danger? Well, initially when the products were first put on the market, the products were permanent devices. And there was a push during that period of, uh, period of time after they'd been on the market for a while to actually make them retrievable devices. When they changed the product, that's when they had to, uh, on the spider-like design, uh, make the points of the metal weaker so that when they sent the retrieval device up in there, the, uh, in the inferior vena cava, it would squeeze the prongs back together and they could remove the device. Well, the problem with that is that it creates weak points in which those devices can fracture uh, the devices also have issues with migration. They can actually move from the intended implantation site towards the heart or even into the heart. Uh, and of course, when you, you talk about that in, in terms also of the fracture, you're also looking at any fracture or piece of metal that breaks off of that device could actually go into the heart and cause serious problems or death for the individual who has the device implanted. So what kind of injuries does the fraction or the migration of those pieces cause? Well, when the device uh, has a fracture that occurs, again, that, that can cause that piece of the device to go into the heart. Those symptoms actually uh, that the person will experience are very similar to that of a, a heart attack, uh, chest pain, nausea, dizziness, uh, increased heart rate. Uh, in some cases, you'll even see low blood pressure and that's how the individual would actually know that they're, they're actually having a problem with the device. Otherwise, the only way that a person would know that there's a potential problem for the device would actually be a CT scan to check the positioning of the device and relative safety of whether or not that device has migrated towards the heart. So the manufacturer knows about this problem with this device and other people know about problems with this device. It sounds like something the FDA would take action on, have they? Well, actually, uh, that, that goes back to the NBC News report. Senator Grassley has actually written two letters to the FDA kind of asking them, well, what happened here? What, where was the, the, how did this slip by? And the FDA has done what they normally do in medical device cases, which is monitor adverse events related to the products that are on the market. And in this particular case, since uh, 2005, there have been roughly a thousand adverse events related to these particular products or this series of products. Um, the FDA, knowing that these investigative reports have gone on and Grassley's letters investigated the data that they had, and as of uh, May of 2014, has issued a safety alert relative to these particular products. Now, the interesting thing about the safety alert is that they simply say, look, we need more data to make a determination relative to the safety and effectiveness of these products. However, we do see some problems. So what our recommendation is going to be is that if you have one of these products implanted and the risk for pulmonary embolism has passed for that particular person, then the product should be removed from the body of the, of the patient immediately. And uh, it sounds like, Martin, the key to this product is that it's meant to be retrievable. Is it retrievable? Uh, studies have shown that they are not actually as retrievable as they were made out to be. Certain uh, classes of these products have hooks on the end of them, uh, on the end of the spider device in order to actually, once they're implanted, when they spread out, to kind of dig into the side of the inferior vena cava. And that's for stability purposes. But what they've seen with a number of those devices is they actually uh, have tissue ingrowth and dig into the, the inferior vena cava too much and it makes uh, removal very difficult. Um, there, there's actually doctors across the country 
uh, Dr. William Coe at Stanford for one that the NBC article mentions who actually have, have came about with a specialty uh, of removing these devices. That's incredible information. So if a person has had this device implanted and feel like perhaps suffered an injury, do they have any recourse? Uh, they do. The first thing you, that, that you have to know is whether or not you have one of the devices that are being litigated. Those are the BARD G2 and the BARD Recovery, the Cook Select and the Cook uh, Gunther Tulip. Um, a lot of people when they have these devices implanted will get a medical implant card uh, that will tell them what device that they have. If you think you have one of these devices or know you have one, uh, then I would recommend that you contact our law firm immediately, um, regardless of whether or not you've actually suffered a problem with the device. If it's still implanted in your body, uh, according to the FDA, there's a potential danger there. Uh, so my advice is to um, actually go ahead and, and, and pursue the case, conduct discovery, investigate uh, to make sure that you don't end up being a victim of the product. Wow, it's good information and something you may not have known. Attorney Martin Crump with the law firm Davis & Crump. Thanks for watching.